Hello, my name is Adam. Welcome to the second episode of Tapir tutorial series. In the first part, we briefly introduced Tapir, a library for rapidly developing and deploying self-documenting APIs. We introduced the concept of an endpoint and we saw how to expose an endpoint using, using an HTTP server. Today, in the second part, we will automatically generate open API documentation for our endpoints as well as expose them use, using the Swagger UI. So let's start. First of all, what's open API? Let's take a brief look at the web page. So here we've got the open API homepage. It's a specification which allows you to describe your API using YAML or JSON. Such a specification can then be used in various ways. For example, you can render a UI showing all the endpoints, or you can generate client stubs in your favorite programming language or even server stubs. So it's quite a useful thing to have, especially if you're working in multiple teams and you would like to communicate what is the API that you have developed to the other teams. Um, so here we've got the web page describing the specification in detail. Here's a demo of the Swagger editor. So on the left over here, we've got an example specification. On the right, we have this specification rendered as HTML. So the, what you would write or generate automatically is the thing on the left, right? So that's a long YAML. Um, I don't think you would want to actually write this YAML by hand or to maintain it by hand. So what we will try to do is we will try to generate um, this machine readable, well, also human readable, but it's, um, I think the primary target of a YAML file is a machine. So we'll try to generate the specification so that we can get a nicely rendered HTML uh, page as over here um, on the right. Okay, so let's try doing that. So uh, maybe let's first do a quick refreshment of on what we've got so far. Um, so we have described um, a single endpoint using Tapir. Um, I have a slightly larger example over here. So first of all, we need um, some um, dependencies. We are once again using Scala CLI, which allows us to contain the whole example in one file. Uh, so we have some dependencies. Uh, this one allows us to actually access the Tapir API to describe the endpoint. This dependency brings in an HTTP server based on Netty. So we have some imports. Um, later on, we have the main entry point to our application. In our, in our application, what we do is we first define the first endpoint. So we've, uh, we've got an endpoint description over here. Um, and the endpoint has a number of inputs. So uh, it's the values that are matched or read from the request, right? So we match on the hello world path and we extract the query uh, parameter called name. Uh, as an output, we will always produce a string body. And then we, uh, so that's the value that describes the endpoint. Mm, as, a, as, a, as an immutable Scala value. And then we attach some logic to it, right? So uh, we need to say what should actually happen when this endpoint is invoked. So um, we have the name which corresponds to the query parameter over here. And then we produce an output which is then used to create the response as a string body. And we have another endpoint just so that the demo is a bit more exciting. Um, so um, here we've got a post endpoint with, which corresponds to the double path. It, ring, it reads the entire body as a string from the request and it writes a response as a string. There might be errors also represented as a string. The logic is slightly more um, involved. So we try to convert the input as an, uh, to, to an integer. Um, if it fails, we return an error. So uh, errors are represented as left or right values. So the left value is an error, the right value represents success. It's a convention in functional programming, which we are using here. So if, um, if, the, if this fails, if, uh, if it fails to convert to an int, we return a left that it's not a number. Otherwise we return the value doubled um, as a string. Um, so we've got these two description of endpoints. The last thing that we need to do is we need to expose them to the outside world. So what we do is we uh, 
create a builder for a Netty server and for a Netty based server, we add those two endpoints and we call the start method, which will actually block for an indefinite amount of time. We can try running this and seeing if this works. So uh, we use Scala CLI to run uh, the code. It compiled, it started, no exceptions, that's always nice. So we can try invoking our double endpoint with the value 21 and we get 42. So that's the happy path. Uh, we can pass an ABC, which is clearly not a number and we get an error as specified. Okay, so now that we've got the basics covered, let's actually generate some open API documentation automatically having these descriptions of endpoints. So here we described our endpoints using a Scala API as Scala values. So I would argue that this way of describing endpoints is way more programmer friendly than actually writing down YAML. You have a lot of possibilities of abstraction and so on, which you don't really have uh, when writing down YAML. Um, so I would say that at least I would actually prefer to write down my endpoint descriptions as Scala values and then generate the YAML. And that's what we will actually do. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to bring in an interpreter. The interpreter will uh, allow us to translate the descriptions representing the Scala values into a YAML string. We already have an interpreter over here. So we've got a server interpreter, right? So this interpreter, what it does is it takes a bunch of endpoints and exposes them um, as a web server. So it interprets the endpoints as a web server. So we need to do something similar, but we need to generate documentation. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to bring in the interpreter as a dependency. So let's go um, up and add this dependency over here. So uh, dependency is called uh, Swagger UI bundle. Swagger UI bundle. Okay. And we will also import it. So it's Swagger bundle Swagger interpreter. Okay. We've got it imported. So now we can actually try using it. So let's go. Maybe I will follow the terminal for now. Let's actually go over here. So we've got our endpoints defined. So now what we can do is we can actually translate them to the YAML. So we will use the Swagger interpreter, interpreter that we have just um, and that we have just imported, and we call from server endpoints. So we want to generate the um, the specification using server endpoints. So uh, these two values, they are server endpoints because they um, consist of an endpoint description coupled with the server logic that should be run when this endpoint is invoked. So we pass in the list of these two endpoints. Okay. Uh, and now we need to provide a title for the generated uh, YAML specification. So it will be my app and the version will be uh, 1.0. So what this returns is another set of endpoints and, and these endpoints, they're also Tapir server endpoints, but what they do is they expose the Swagger UI to the, to the, to the user. So the task is to serve the uh, HTML, to serve the CSS, um, and, and uh, some JavaScript, uh, some JavaScript probably. So, there's a couple of resources that, that needs to be served. Plus we also need to serve the specification itself. So we can assign it to a Swagger endpoints value over here. And of course, once we have these endpoints, right, we still need to expose them using a server. So what we do is we expose them over here. There are two details which I think are worth mentioning here. So first of all, we've got the Swagger interpreter, which actually combines two steps. So the first step is to take the list of endpoints, such as over here, and to translate this list of endpoints into an open API value. So this open API is a representation of the open API specifications model. Um, and then what we, once we have this model, we can 
for example, modify it by hand if we, if we want to, but we can also serialize it to a string. We can serialize it to JSON, we can serialize it to YAML. So the Swagger interpreter combines these two steps of generating the OpenAPI model and serializing it um, to a string. Um, and it actually also um, generates the endpoints which expose this, this, uh, this serialized specification. So that's one detail. Another detail is something that we also need to fix in code. So, so Tapir integrates with, with a large number of um, Scala stacks. Each Scala stack uses a different way to represent side effects, to, re to represent IO operations, to represent operations which might somehow change the state of the world. So here we are using a di direct star Scala with synchronous blocking calls. In other Scala stacks, quite often futures are used to do the same. So when you have a side effecting computation or an IO computation, you will actually use a future to represent it, to run it asynchronously. Or in the purely functional stacks, you, you use IO um, descriptions to actually describe your computations and only run them afterwards. So Tapir is usable with all of these stacks. However, sometimes we need to tell Tapir what kind of uh, and uh, what kind of effect we are using and how we are representing um, our effects. So, uh, so far we didn't really use any effects, right? We just represented these effects directly. Um, and sometimes Tapir has dedicated APIs for dealing with this with uh, such direct style or synchronous style Scala. For example, the handle method over here assumes uh, that you are using synchronous direct style. Scala. If you wanted to mm, specify the server logic when integrating with a future stack, for example, or with Cats Effect or Zio, what you would write instead is, is you would write server logic and you would pass in the effect type over here. So you would write future or IO or Zio or something like that. Uh, but we've got handle here and that's uh, that's. Mm, much easier and it's a, it, 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 it also has better type inference. Uh, however, in case of the Swagger interpreter, we only have a single interpreter which works with, with an effect type. So here what we need to say <coughs> is that we are actually using um, an effect which is not an effect, which is a um, fake effect, right? We, which uh, we, we, we need to say that we're using direct style. And this can be done by passing in the identity type proper. So identity is a simple type alias. Identity of X is just X, <clears throat> which doesn't really do anything. Um, it just represents unwrapped computations. However, we need to pass in this type parameter over here uh, to say that we are actually using the direct stack. Once again, if you were, for example, using integrating with the ACA stack, you would pass in a future here, right? If you would uh, use cuts effect, you would pass in an IO here. So um, we are passing identity and we also need to import that value. STTP share identity. Okay. So I think that's all the code change that we did, right? Uh, so uh, let's now try running the terminal. So let's retry running this. Okay, it compiled. So now let's switch to the browser to see if it works. Um, and here we have the documentation that, be, that has been generated. You can see that we've got our two endpoints. We can try it out. So we can send it 81, for example, and execute. And we've got the response 162. Um, we can also, for example, modify something in our. So let's say we now uh, we will use the double two path and we run it again. And if we refresh it, you can see that the path has changed here. Uh, so one more thing that I think is worth um, taking a look at is the specification that got, that got generated itself. So we can download it by clicking uh, this link over here. Mm, so let's take a look at uh, let's, let's take a look mm, what we have there. So we 
downloads uh, docs.yaml. Okay, so as you can see, there's a considerable amount of YAML that got generated that we didn't have to write by hand. Um, so we've got the title that we passed in the version, we've got the hello world um, endpoint, and you can see that it requires um, a query parameter that's called name. It's required, it's read as a string, it responds um, with a string in case of success. If the parameter is missing, we will get a 400, and that's all described in the YAML, and it's also described over here, right? So you can see that this string parameter is required, and we have the same two responses specified over here. Um, okay, so I guess that's it for our demo. And um, so just to recap, the change that we needed to do in order to expose the documentation of our endpoints using Swagger uh, UI is essentially just calling this Swagger interpreter, well, adding the dependency and calling it the interpreter. Then we obtain the endpoints, which themselves expose the generated YAML and the Swagger UI resources. And we need to add these endpoints to our server. So that's it in this episode. Um, I hope everything was clear. Um, if you would have any questions, um, just uh, write it in the comments or um, write us on our community forum. In the next episode, we will cover exposing and consuming JSON bodies. Okay, so have fun using Tapir and thank you very much.